Hello you absolute legends. When it comes to difficult video games, there is one franchise that always seems to top the list, and that of course, is Dark Souls. The Soulsborne games are universally praised for being both extremely difficult and yet fair, allowing players to fully harness their skills in order to cleanly navigate their way through tough challenges. On the 20th of March 2019, The Happy Hob accomplished one of the greatest gaming feats of all time, completing the entire Soulsborne series without taking a single hit. He consecutively beat Bloodborne, Dark Souls, Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls 3, and Demon Souls in an utterly flawless manner. An achievement that took a total of 17 hours, and one that I would love to cover sometime in the future. Whenever you have very difficult games, there is always a small subset of gamers that seek to push the limits of what's possible. Finishing a game without taking a single hit, or without incurring a single sliver of damage, is an obvious way to demonstrate your complete dominance. While these days Dark Souls and similar games tend to take center stage in this conversation, 30 years ago it was the Nintendo Entertainment System that facilitated the most notoriously difficult games available for play. Games such as Battletoads, Ghosts and Goblins, Contra, and Silver Surfer were all famously difficult to complete, and yet players have done the seemingly impossible by finishing them without being touched by the game's enemies. But there was one particular game that was legitimately considered impossible to beat in such a way, a game that is infamous for its difficulty, and that game is Ninja Gaiden. Similar to Dark Souls, Ninja Gaiden is almost unfair to the casual player. If you don't know what you're doing, you are going to be destroyed. If you do learn the ins and outs of the game however, you can make pretty short work of it, as speedrunners have demonstrated over the years. As for beating the game without taking a single hit, that is a different story entirely. For over 30 years, no one believed it could be done. But on the 23rd of December 2020, the impossible was achieved, with the gamer Slackinator getting through the entire game without losing a single hit point. In this video, we are going to learn why everyone thought this feat was impossible, and what Slackinator was able to do in order to get the job done. The key to this achievement is actually insane, and it's honestly mind-blowing that anyone was able to pull this off. I really hope you enjoy. Now before we go on, a huge thank you to Rich for making this video possible. Ridge offer amazing compact wallets that not only look good, but also feel great in your pocket. Forget those traditional bulky wallets, Ridge wallets are the future. Not only are they easy to carry, but these bad boys are tough as nails and will last forever. Ridge offer a lifetime warranty and a money back guarantee if you don't love it. You can get 10% off today plus free worldwide shipping by going to ridge.com slash legend and use the promo code LEGEND. The link is in the description. In May of 2012, a user by the name of Surefire Tactics uploaded a video to YouTube titled Ninja Gaiden No Damage Run. You'll notice that the no damage is in quotation marks, and this is because it's not technically a no damage run. In the very final boss fight, the protagonist Ryu takes damage from the demon's head as it dislodges from the body and launches itself forwards. This kamikaze strike cannot be avoided. You can't jump over it, and slashing the head has no effect as its health is too high. In their video, Surefire Tactics overlaid the text, this attack is unavoidable. In the description, they stated, the only problem is that there is an unavoidable attack at the third phase of the final boss. Otherwise, I have beaten the whole game without taking a hit. Whether or not this particular run is completely legitimate is up for debate. It uses some dubious strategies that have extremely low chances of being successful, leading some people to believe it made use of save states or some kind of tool. But the prospect of getting through the full game without taking a hit wasn't necessarily a crazy one, at least until the final boss fight. In December of 2013, the player Magnus Zero uploaded a segmented no damage run. Again, it was proclaimed that the damage taken in the final boss fight could not be avoided. In the uploaded video, they stated, And there's the undodgeable cheap shot. Yes, unless you hack, you can't dodge it. Even recently, in September of 2020, the gamer Press Continue released a segmented no damage run of Ninja Gaiden. At the beginning of the video, he had this to say about the final fight. But in this video, I'm going to take you step by step through the entirety of this classic Nintendo game and I will show you how to prevent taking any damage. At least that which can be prevented to begin with. 
because this game actually contains a single unpreventable hit against the final boss. When the head comes off, it's not physically possible to avoid taking damage from that. Especially because given that your item is taken away before you get here, you cannot rely on spin slash iframes either. Meaning it's a guaranteed hit by design and therefore something we are simply forced to accept. So that will be the only hit I take in this playthrough. Needless to say, it was accepted as a universal truth that getting hit by this particular attack was as certain as death and taxes, at least for a human player. While it was definitely a given that taking damage from the boss fight couldn't be avoided, the game's code did theoretically allow for the head to be killed. In 2004, a tool-assisted speedrun was created by Boltar, completing the game in 11 minutes and 20 seconds. The entire run contains the usual TAS shenanigans that a human could never do, but the end fight was particularly interesting. In this tool-assisted run, they were able to kill the demon head outright before it even touched the ground. This tells us that like any other enemy in the game, it does have a set amount of health and will die if that health is fully depleted. In fact, we know that the head has exactly 16 hit points, which is the same as the tail and heart of the demon. The head dislodges from the body after 11 hits, meaning that it has 5 remaining. So technically, if you were to hit it 5 times before it fell, you could destroy it before it hit you. At first glance, this doesn't even seem possible. The standard slash animation is pretty slow, and when you jump, you are only able to perform around two slashes before falling to the ground. But there is a technique that allows us to strike much faster, and it's called slash cancelling. By pressing both the attack button and down on the D-pad at the same time, Ryu will perform an extremely quick attack. How quick exactly? Well, it's so quick that you're essentially only limited by how fast you can press the buttons. Obviously, a tool-assisted speedrun doesn't have to worry about restraints caused by the human nervous system, so it can hit the demon head 16 times in around half a second. This is way faster than a normal person could ever do. People can mash pretty quickly though. In 2017, the world record holder of Ninja Gaiden, Arcus, uploaded a tutorial showing us how fast he could execute slash cancels. So again, the other hand can do left and right if needed. And this is only used against the final two bosses, but I thought I'd show it now since I do have the webcam here. Um, so yeah, once again, you can't really get a good good view of it from this angle. But yeah, I'm gonna tap tap A with the middle finger and mash it out like this. Personally, I consider myself to be a pretty fast clicker. In the Mario Party 4 minigame Domination, where it counts how many clicks you can do in 10 seconds, I would almost always come out on top. So how fast can I click? Well, on clickspeedtest.com, the highest I could achieve in a single second was 14 clicks, which I think is pretty respectable. But would this be enough to kill the demon head? Well, we can actually calculate the mashing speed required in order to do so. From the exact moment the head is hit by the 11th slash to the moment it hits the ground is 0.334 seconds. So you need to perform 5 slash cancels in a third of a second, which is a rate of 15 presses per second. I've tried, and I simply cannot press a button that quickly. But slash cancelling is far more difficult than simply pressing a single button, like what I did in the click test. Slash cancelling requires two buttons to be hit at the exact same time. So not only do you need to mash at inhuman speeds, but you need to mash two buttons in perfect synchronicity. And you need to do it on a Nintendo controller. This is something only a small percentage of people would ever be able to do, no matter how much practice they put in. 15 presses per second is extremely high, but it seems to be on the cusp of what's possible. In May of 2016, the YouTuber Sin uploaded a tool-assisted no-damage run that demonstrated a more realistic demon head kill. Instead of doing all 16 hits in a single jump, it would prepare the kill by doing 3 jumps totaling 10 hits. It would then perform the final flurry of 6 hits. In 2017, a viewer in Arcus's stream asked him to try the TAS only kill, destroying it before it could launch itself forward. Using a save state and repeating that section many times, he was finally able to do it. There it is. We destroyed the demon head.
This was the first time we had ever seen verifiable proof of anyone actually pulling this off. Being able to kill the head wouldn't just be of use in a no damage run. Technically, it would be a time save for speedruns as well. In the world record run performed by Arcus, he does get hit by the head, causing him to be pushed backwards and disabled for half a second. So if he had managed to kill the head, there was potential to save up to a full second. Ultimately, this would never be used in speedruns. It's simply too difficult. The chances of getting to the end on record pace and then pulling off this insane kill are way too low. But it did open the door to a no-hit run, and showed that it was at least theoretically achievable. In practice though, it was essentially still considered impossible, which might sound strange given that it was actually successfully done. However, there is a big, big difference between grinding the same trick over and over again using a save state and managing to pull it off first try at the end of a 15 or 20 minute no damage run. There are plenty of strategies that exist that are humanly possible, but will likely never be performed in a real speedrun. One of the most well-known examples is the infamous carpetless strategy in Super Mario 64. In the Rainbow Ride stage, you can get the star Big House in the Sky without riding the carpet. It was a theoretical strategy that might save almost a minute in 120 star speedruns, but it was only something that had been done in tool-assisted playthroughs. In 2019, the speedrunner Zaya became the first person to ever successfully perform the strategy in single star attempts. But does that mean it will now be implemented in full game runs? No, definitely not, and there are very few people that think it ever will. For all intents and purposes, a no damage Ninja Gaiden run was still out of the question. But several years later in August of 2020, the question was asked again. This time in the Twitch chat of Slackinator a speedrunner that holds multiple world records and specializes in classic NES titles. Slackinator was provided a clip of Arcus performing the Demon Headkill three years earlier in 2017. Being a fan of video game challenges, he decided to investigate the feasibility of a true 100% no damage Ninja Gaiden run. He began work on practicing the mash, and made the commitment that if he was able to successfully kill the head one out of every 20 tries, he would officially commence attempts at the first legitimate damageless run. Three months later, he was ready, and in November would begin routing. Throughout this video I've been focusing on the final boss fight, but the rest of the run is still incredibly difficult. Aside from the dubious video uploaded in 2012, no one had been able to complete a full damageless run in a single setting. Just getting to the final boss fight at all is extremely difficult, but Slackinator would need to do it many times due to how insane the final kill is. He needed to be able to complete a run, not only consistently, but also relatively quickly, as if each attempt was too long, the grind would simply be too drawn out. On November 25th, he would get his first completion taking only a single hit from the demon head. <laughs> oh, one hit away! There is, there is Ninja Gaiden beaten with one damage. Two weeks later on December 9th, he would get the first Demon Head kill in a no-hit run in history. Yes! Oh shit! We got shrimped! We got the freaking... Oh! Oh my god, we got the f No! Oh, I don't care at this point. Oh, we got the mash in a run! Oh, we got the mash in a run! Oh, and then we got shrimp. We had the fucking mash in a run. Unfortunately, getting the kill isn't the only thing you need to worry about. The projectiles being thrown by the demon can hit you while performing the mash. So even if you do everything perfectly, you can still get unlucky. And in this case, that's exactly what happened. He did kill the head, but was hit by a single projectile immediately afterwards, which was unavoidable. Slackinator wouldn't be dissuaded. After two more weeks of grinding, on the 23rd of December, he would do this.
just relax. The first ever freaking, oh my god, it, it happened! Oh, it was the first try today! Oh, I am just freaking out shaking. Whew. Calm down. <laughs> Oh my god, it happened! Oh, I never thought it was gonna happen, guys. I truly did not believe I was gonna be able to do that. For the first time in over 30 years, one of the most notoriously difficult games ever made had been defeated in perfect fashion. An accomplishment that was considered to be humanly impossible until the very day it was done. A huge congratulations to Slackinator, and I highly recommend you go and throw him a follow over on Twitch. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more video game challenges like this one featured on this channel. Personally, I would really love to start delving more into no-hit runs and other crazy feats. As always, thank you so much for watching, you legends. I hope you are having a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video.